Good morning, everyone. Time to start my day here in Adrian, Texas, where I spent the night because there was a huge thunderstorm. I couldn't even see where I stayed, so this is what it looks like. Hey. So there's still a rainbow from the storm right there. So last night was completely pitch black and I didn't even see that there were all these windmills. The midpoint sign is right there, right across from the midpoint cafe. Let's go check out that sign. A official midpoint of Route 66. Los Angeles is 1,139 miles that way. Chicago, which is where I'm going, is also 1,139 miles that way. Very cool. There's a big sign here on the ground for the midpoint. You can really see that rainbow go from here through the clouds and then way back down over here. Rain clouds, not so much here. Very cool. Let's take a look at what stickers people put on here. Bauman Motors, Sound Waves, Team Adventure, Hideous Monster, John and Betty Road Trip Adventure. That's pretty cool. Vespa, something, something, Small Fry Loves You, Bikertopia. There's a whole bunch more in the back. Well, not really a lot, but more so people just riding on it. Very cool. All right, I think I should probably move my car because I don't know if I'm actually allowed to stay there. Let's go. All right, I'm starving. Let's go eat at this Midpoint Cafe. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like they open until 8 a.m. and it's only 7.25 right now. So I will just need to walk around and kill some time until I can grab some breakfast because I am starving right now. There's also this pretty cool Fabulous 40 motel right next to it with this old truck. Oh, cool. Hey, buddy. Walking back over to my truck and a double rainbow is appearing. What? I've never seen anything like this before. Emergency alert extreme. Tornado warning in this area. Take shelter now. Hmm. Yeah, Californians don't have any basements. Uh, let's see what else. Child abduction alert. Okay. In Dallas, Texas. Severe thunderstorm warming. Thanks. Thanks. I know that. Time has been killed and I'm ready to grab some breakfast. I also want to get this Cadillac Ranch one. Thanks for breakfast, Midpoint. Next up is going to be a town called Vega, about 15 minutes away, to pick up some spray paint. Made it to the small town of Vega, where I need to look for some spray paint. Off to the side, there's one of these propellers for the windmills, which is pretty big. Don't really realize, you can see that truck in the back. It looks tiny.
I've been driving around Vega for some time now and I really don't know if I can find any spray paint around here. I was really hoping that I could find some kind of hardware store or something, but a lot of these businesses look like they're closed down and what's left is like gas stations and old motels. So I think I'm just gonna drive around for a few more minutes. There's a sign here to go to Vega downtown. So I'll check that out. If not, then I guess I'll just keep going. Let's go to the next stop at 26 miles. I totally almost missed this on my way out of Vega and I'm glad I stopped. Now we're going to Cadillac Ranch. I pulled over here on the side of I don't know where I am in between Vega and the Cadillac Ranch but I saw this off-road farming mini truck this is a K truck imported from Japan and these are actually really hard to register in California because yeah just California just sucks with imported cars but this is a right hand drive you can see right there it's a four speed I really wanted to get one of these they also have K vans, which I'm actually more interested in the van rather than the truck, but the truck is still pretty cool. Look, there's, there's even baby wheels in the back. <laughs> this thing is so cute. Look at it next to my truck, adorable. Man, I wish I could have one of these. And it's just, it's parked here, like in the middle of this open field. Okay, I'm parked kind of far, so I have to walk the rest of the way to get to Cadillac Ranch. And there's a lot of people over there. The street here looks like it's been tagged up with, I'm assuming, leftover spray paint from over there. Maybe a stranger will be kind enough to give me the rest of their spray paint. Hopefully I can... Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go back. In case I don't have any spray paint, I think I may have some Sharpies in my truck. <laughs> I grabbed some Sharpies. I'm a tagger guy. I don't think you're supposed to tag on there. I'm tempted, but yeah, that's government property. So I am going to go over there. Hopefully it's not too muddy. It looks like it's kind of wet over there, but I should be okay in, in my, my ranger boots. Uh, you happen to have any leftover spray paint? You want one? Yeah, I'll take this it. This is probably the best one. Oh, Super perfect. Too. Perfect, perfect. Um, sure. Okay. Yellow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Water. When you be able to paint that first one? Probably. That first one? Yeah. Okay. That first cool. one, gonna get wet. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, hey. I got some spray paint. So they said that the only one that is not wet that people are painting is that first one. But I am not afraid to get my feet wet. Let's go. Look at the street. It's covered in paint. Everybody over here is tagging up the wall. Yeah, I still don't want to do that. Let's go over there instead. Wow, they actually sell spray paint here. I wonder if they're selling them for like a lot. Let's go check it out. $7.50 a can, I guess that's not too bad. It looks like this is the water runoff from last night's storm. Man, the closer I get, the less down I am to go over there. It's looking pretty murky. I mean, I see kids walking around in their barefoot, and I guess they'll just 
wash their feet off but I don't know about getting in in that water so I'll just I'll stick over here I thought it was gonna be safe but my socks are soaked I put lol with a smiley face on it lol Next stop is going to be about 15 miles from here. It is the Big Texan Steak and something brewery. I'll probably go grab a beer really quick and then uh, continue on my way. All along the fence are old beat up shoes. Probably shoes that got ruined while getting in the water over there. I made it over here to the Big Texan Steak Ranch. This place is really cool. I thought the whole thing was like a restaurant, but there's like other stores in here. There's a gift shop. There's like some other stuff. I saw this thing was out of service, which kind of sucks because I'm trying to collect these. A little shooting arcade here. We have Zoltar. Woody. That mom over there just covered her daughter's eyes when passing this area. Because they changed faces. Hey, friends. So I guess they decommissioned this penny press because they want us to spend a dollar instead. Hey there, friend. Welcome to Pappy's Pennies. I am the original penny crush. Prepare to be amazed. Now go ahead, pick out your design, and stand back. So they have a thing where if you eat a 72 ounce steak, you can have it for free. And this first one here says seven seconds. I don't know how real that is, but the other ones are 59 minutes, 40 minutes, and then seconds. Seven seconds? What? I kind of wish I wouldn't have had such a big breakfast because it would have been nice to have like a, a massive steak here, but I just didn't have any room. On my way over to my next stop, which is about 20 minutes, and I realized that I probably should have kept the spray paint that I had. At least I still have my Sharpies, unless I find more spray paint over there. I have absolutely no idea where I am. Somewhere in Texas. I've never seen one of these in person. Hey, buddy. I'm a fan. made it to the slug bug ranch i actually spoke with the owner that stays here uh, steve is his name he's super chill he did tell me a little bit of history of this place the service station that was right there 
They set this up about 21 years ago, give or take, and it was only in operation for about a year until the owners passed away. So I guess their kids didn't really want anything to do with it. So they sold it and they sold it to Steve. So now Steve is running the place and he has uh, some stuff inside. He has like a gift shop, t-shirts, he has some paint and anyone is welcome to come here and just paint whatever they want. All of these here, they have one, two, three, four, five, five bugs. And then two other cars. I don't know what this is. That's like another board or something. But yeah, they they tell you it's private property, but it's completely open to the public to come and paint however you want. And I came here with my Sharpies. So let's uh, let's get tagged up. Okay, I've left my mark. Goober's dad. Yeah, this is pretty cool. They have all the noses pointed face down. Here in the back, they have like this abandoned Chevy. So that is Highway 40. I'm gonna hop on and the next stop is gonna be, I think in about 15 or 20 minutes or so. This is a place called Cross of the Lord in the city of Groom. There's like this massive cross here and they have all the stations of the cross going all the way around and they also have the last supper the depiction of the last supper right there and the crucifixes just before leaving the city of Groom, i wanted to stop by the leaning tower of texas this was intentionally built i think it was made like this to draw attention to a local truck stop and restaurant and i don't think those are here anymore but this tower is still here. You can actually still see the tower on the side of the road. People have told me Texas is flat, but nobody ever told me it was flat, flat. Like there's absolutely nothing besides the horizon and the sky. I'm here in the town of McLean. And this is the old 66 Super Service Station. Also abandoned, but it's still kind of just hanging out. This was built by Bradley Kaiser in 1930. Oh, there's another one here with a van inside of it. Let's go check it out. Whoa. Yeah, maybe I should not put my truck under there. That kind of sounds like rattlesnakes, to be honest. This is the most interesting gas station I've ever filled up at. I'm in the city of McLean, and this is the Silverton Oil and Gas Fuel Station. And there's, no, there's nobody around. I only come here and I insert my card here, and then I just pump gas and don't have to see anybody. Like I haven't seen anybody for the past, like, I don't even know how long. Oh, gas is done. Also gas in Texas is really, really cheap. Way cheaper than California. I guess there's like an area for people to walk around at. There's a McLean Allen Reed Historical Museum. They have here the Devil's Rope Museum, which is a tribute to barbed wire. And they're closed, unfortunately, so I'll just keep on pushing through. I'm in the small town of Shamrock and these cars kind of caught my attention. But then I saw this and it's kind of weird. It's like a bunch of nuts and bolts welded together. A couple miles up, there's like an Indian restaurant. It's called Punjab Daba, I think it's what it's called. 
just driving by and I saw this old car junkyard. A whole bunch of classics. I see one bug here. A bunch of Fords, Pontiacs, Chevys, Plymouths. I think that's even a Ford Edsel right there in the middle. That orange one. A Bel Air, I think. Look at these wagons, wow. Is that an Impala or a Falcon? I'm not sure. I found the restaurant. It's not even labeled with the actual restaurant name. It just says store and restaurant. But I'm having some chicken curry. That is Highway 40 there. And I just realized that this is actually going to be the last stop I'm making before hitting the Texas and Oklahoma border. It's only about 10 miles down that way. That Indian food was actually pretty good. I do recommend it. If you do come along here, it's the last stop right before getting into the border from Texas into Oklahoma. So because I didn't take the main highway, I'm on Route 66. I don't know if they're gonna have a marker for the Texas and Oklahoma state line. Here I see a line on my map, but I don't know if that's the border. Actually, maybe it's not, because it, it's this street. Okay, let's keep going. Oh man, I actually did miss the border. I guess they did not mark it on the Route 66, only on Highway 40, so oh well. I guess we could just go to the Sand Hill Curiosity Shop. I'm not sure if we're in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, I think we are. Anyways, I made it to the Sand Hill, um, what's this place called? Something. Well, here's the first for you. Okay, what's that? This is the very first Route 66 sign posted in the state of Oklahoma. That's the first sign this of Route 66. This is the first Route 66 sign posted in the state of Oklahoma from 1926. Take it or leave it. Wow. That place was very interesting, to say the least. He had a lot of stuff in there. Like, a lot, a lot of stuff. So he and his wife have owned this place since 1986. Yeah, he's kind of just been hanging out here ever since then. Elk City, Oklahoma. This is the Oklahoma Transportation and Route 66 Museum. Unfortunately, they're closed today because it's a Sunday. This is supposed to be the biggest Route 66 sign on the entire route. So it's pretty interesting to actually see this. Look how big it is compared to my truck. It's, it's massive. There's not really a whole lot for me to see up until I get to around Oklahoma City area, which is about an hour and a half drive. By the time I get over to Oklahoma City, that's basically when the sun is gonna start to set. So once I get over there, I'll start looking for a place to spend the night. 
Well, the last spot I wanted to check out before heading to Oklahoma City is actually closed. Just up ahead, there's a bridge up there called Bridgeport Bridge, also known as Pony Bridge. And it's really only like up there and just past the curve, but I guess it's closed. So I have to hop back this way and onto the 40 and then just go straight over to Oklahoma City, which is that way. And I think it's gonna be about 50 minutes to about an hour. I think I'm just gonna find a local Walmart. I called ahead and one of them said that they do allow for people to kind of camp in the, in the parking lot in their cars. So I may just do that for the night. 